Well, there's a nice notation that helps us to remember and compute the, the uh, gradient, the divergence, and the curl. And it's this del operator, which is a vector of operations. The first component is the operation of taking the derivative with respect to x. The second component is the operation of taking the derivative with respect to y. And the third component is the operation of taking the derivative with respect to z. So when we write the del operator, we usually make it a little bit bolder on this side. So when we write the del operator, we have like an upside down delta and make it a little bit bold by uh, by putting extra line on it so that we know that it's a vector valued operator. Now, the idea of an operator, you're probably already familiar with it, but you don't even realize it. So if we have a function, say like x squared, and we put this operator d dx in front of it, it means the operation of d dx is going to hit this function x squared and give us the derivative with respect to x. So operators, they, when you, normally when you write a number next to a function, right, it multiplies, but an operator, when it hits a function, instead of multiplying, it performs whatever operation it says to do. So let's say the operation of d dz hits the function x, y, z. Well, as far as d dz is concerned, x and y are constants, so they just come through, and then the operation of taking the derivative with respect to z of z occurs, which that derivative is 1, so we get x, y. Okay, so you see how these um, how these operations um, how these operations work. So when we talk about the del operator, we're just talking about a whole vector of operations. Now, um, a vector could be multiplied by a scalar, right, or a scalar valued function. So we could have this this vector of operations multiply some scalar valued function like the function x, y, z. And when you multiply a vector times a scalar, you know that the scalar just hits each of these, right? So the scalar just multiplies each component. Well, if we're talking about operators, it just means that that operator operates on, each operator operates on that same scalar valued function. Sorry, d, d, d dy of x, y, z, and d, d, z of x, y, z. So a vector of operators can operate on a scalar valued function. It just each each component operates on that same scalar valued function. Just like when a vector multiplies a scalar, you just the scalar gets multiplied by each of these, right? So it's like multiplication, only it's operation. So we get x, y, z, x, z, and x, y. That's our outputs there. That means that the gradient of f can actually be written as the del operator applied to some scalar valued function f. So for example, if we have this scalar valued function, then when we write del f, what we're really talking about is taking the gradient of f because what's happening here is the del operator, d dx, d dy, d dz, is multiplying or operating on, not really multiplying, operating on this function. So we get, let's see, um, the partial of this with respect to x is 2xy plus cosine z. Right? And then d dy operates on this scalar valued function, and we get x squared. And then d dz operates here, and we get minus x sine z, just like we did before. If you happen to have a, a function with just two inputs, then the gradient op, then the gradient or then the, the gradient is just um, this del operator. Well, since there's only two inputs, we could only think about derivatives with respect to x and y. So our del operator is a little bit shorter in this case. So if we have a function like that, let's see. If there's only two inputs, we'll just assume we're talking about the, the del operator that only has two operations in it. But since this is a vector times a scalar, each component just operates on that scalar valued function. So you get the derivative of this with respect to x. So you get d dx of x sine y, and you also get d dy of x sine y. It's like multiplying a vector by a scalar, but your, your vector is a vector of operations. So instead of multiplying, you actually operate. So you take the derivative with respect to x of x sine y, that's the operation. Right? We get sine y. Take the derivative of this with respect to y, the derivative of sine y is cosine y, so we get x cosine y. And, okay, so the idea is with this del notation, right, this is our del operator, or 
if the context is just two variables, then that's our del operator. So we just apply our del operator to the function, and that produces what we've been calling the gradient. So if you see del, del f, you have a scalar valued function, you know we're talking about the gradient of a function. We could also use this del notation to talk about the divergence. So if you have <coughs> If you have a vector field, right? So this function is a vector field in, all, in R3, and we want to find um, the divergence. We just take our del operator, remember, our, and, and dot it with our function. Remember, our del operator is the operation. First, first operation is derivative with respect to x. Second operation is derivative with respect to y. And the third operation is derivative with respect to z. And if we dot that with this function, it's just like multiplying dot, the dot product of two vectors, right? But instead of multiplying, we operate. So we get um, the dot product of two vectors is a scalar. So we get, they were just regular vectors, we get this multiplication, right? The first component of the first vector times the first component of the second vector. The only difference is now this is instead of an op a, a number, this is an operator. And instead of multiplication, we're going to have operation. So. And we get d dy, so the second component operating, the second component of the operator operating on the second component of the vector field. And then we get the third component of the operator operating on the third component of the vector field. It's just like a dot product, the only change is that it's operation. So we get 1 plus 1. Um, and the partial of this with respect to z is plus xy. So we get this scalar valued function xy. Just like before, when we calculated the divergence, we just did the divergence by thinking about it as a dot product of the del operator with the vector valued function. So, so del dot f and the divergence of f are really just two notations for the same thing. Now, if the context is a two-dimensional vector field, so we have two inputs and two outputs, then we just assume that our, our uh, del operator is the shorter one, right? That only has derivatives with respect to x and y because there is no z. But we can still compute del dot f. It's still going to give us the gradient. So we get, let's see, the derivative with respect to x of the first component is 2x plus the derivative with respect to y of the second component is 2y. So we get 2x plus 2y in this case. Okay, we can even use this del operator to remember what the formula for the curl is. So if you think about crossing this del operator with f, that's going to compute the curl. So remember how you do, <coughs> I think I'm missing a component here. Ah, here's one with, here's one in, in 3D. Remember how you do a, a cross product here, i, j, and k, and then you have our, our, you have your first vector, which in this case it's a vector of operators, so we insert that vector of operators. Um, and then we put in our second vector, which is this vector of functions. That's our vector field. Right? And remember to calculate a cross product, we put them in here and we just take this particular determinant. So we're going to get the partial of xz with respect to y, which is 0 minus the partial of yz with respect to z is y. So we're going to get minus y. And let's see, our j component, we're going to get negative j times um, this determinant. The partial of this with respect to x is um, z. So we have minus because j is in a negative position. And then, um, then we have the partial of this with respect to x is z. And the partial of this with respect to z is 0. So we have z is 0. And then finally k. k is going to be this product. Let's see. The partial with respect to x of y, z is 0. The minus the partial with respect to y of x, y is x. So we get minus x here. So our curl is um, minus y, minus z, and minus x. Now, if your vector field um, is really only a two-dimensional vector field, then remember, when we wanted to calculate the curl, we just um, sort of embedded it in three-dimensional space by adding a zero component on the end. So let's put our ijk here. We're doing del cross f, so we put in the components of that del operator, which are the operations of taking the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. And then we put in our function. Let's see, we have x minus y, x, y, 
and then 0, right? There was no third component. So notice what we're going to get. Let's see, the derivative of 0 with respect to y is 0. The derivative of xy with respect to z is 0. So the first component is 0. And then here's our j. The derivative of this with respect to z is 0, minus the derivative of 0 with respect to x is still 0. And then the k component, the derivative of xy with respect to x is y. And then minus the derivative of the derivative of this with respect to y is negative 1. So minus, minus 1. So we get um, 0, 0, and y plus 1 for the curl in this case. So usually, if we're doing the curl of a two-dimensional vector field, we're only going to be interested in that third component. So we'll dot it with the vector that picks up, that, only, that just takes 1 times the third component, and that will just pick up our third component, which is y plus 1 in this case. Okay. You can see, in general, this is just a nice way of remembering that somewhat complicated formula for the curl, because if you do, let's see, partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, and you've got three components, usually we call them m, n, and p, then what we get here for i is the partial of p with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to z. Um, for j, we get... Um, the partial of m with respect to z minus the partial of p with respect to x. Notice I reverse the order here because j is in a negative position. And then k, we get the partial of n with respect to x minus the partial of m with respect to y. And this is the formula that we originally gave for the curl. Right. <clears throat> it's just we're remembering it with this notation that it's that same del operator, but this time we're crossing it with our function.